Good morning, dears. Let's discuss the question and answers from the chapter Environmental Values, which is included in your textbook Nature Matters, Reading Soon Life and Nature. When you open your textbook at page number 84, you can see the comprehension question, the paragraph question and essay questions also. But we don't need the essay questions, we need only paragraph question and short answer question. Because we don't have essay question in this part. We don't have to do a paragraph or short answer. So we have to ask the first short answer question. Define environmental values. Answer. In the domain of environmental behavior, environmental values are factors that are linked with the positive concern about our environment. Environmental values are inherent in feelings that bring about a feeling of sensitivity for preserving nature as a whole. Now the second question. How do native societies view nature? Answer. The native societies view can be contrasted with the profit-oriented and exploitative views brought in by the colonizers. There are several writings and sayings in Indian thought that support the concept of the oneness of all creation. Now the third question. What is environmental awareness? Answer. Environmental awareness means being aware of the natural environment and making choices that benefit the earth. Some of the ways to practice environmental awareness include conserving energy and water, recycling, etc. Now the fourth question. Or why do humans explore nature? Answer. Humans have an inborn desire to explore nature, wanting to unravel its mysteries is a part of human nature. Now the fifth question. State the causes of environmental problems. Answer. The main cause of environmental problems is because of a lack of awareness of the consequences of anti-environmental behavior. We should know what really is the appropriate behavior in relation to our surroundings and to other species on earth. Now the sixth question. Mention some of the environmental services. Answer. Some of the environmental services include the production of food items, water and other products. Nature cleans up the air by removing carbon dioxide and adds oxygen. Now moving on to the seventh question. How do we educate people on environmental values? Answer. A new educational process should be created to provide a pro-environmental awareness at a school and a college level. Every small child must be taught the importance of environmental values so that they will begin to accept them as a norm.
Now the eighth question. What is the fundamental environmental sentiment? Answer. The most fundamental environmental sentiment is to value nature herself. Appreciating nature's magnificence and treasuring life itself leads to positive feelings. Now the ninth question. Give an example of how environmental awareness extends to man-made landscapes. Answer. There are man-modified landscapes like the colored patterns of farmland, the greens of a tea, coffee plantation in the hills, etc. These green spaces act as not only the lungs of a city, but also provide much needed psychological support. Now the last question, the tenth one. Define existence values. Answer. We value the beauties of earth being the always for us. This is called its existence value. Now we have finished the short answer question. Let's move on to the paragraph questions. There are five paragraph questions. Uh, let's read the first one. Differentiate between native and colonial environmental values. Answer. Value can be defined as the importance, worth, or usefulness of something or someone's judgment of what is important in life. Every human being has a great variety of feelings for different aspects of his or her surroundings. Indian culture plays an important role in inculcating environmental values. Indian culture is complex in nature and with the diversity in religion and the customs we live with the unity. We have a consciousness which is of togetherness and together we project the ideas of environmental values. Recognizing nature as the essential life giver and a sustainer, Indians across the country worship nature. The sun, moon, air, trees, shrubs, mountains and rivers are all considered holy due to the early recognition of our interdependence. The Western modern approach values the resources of nature for the utilitarian importance alone. However, true environmental values go beyond valuing a river for its water and a forest for its timber. Environmental values are inherent in feelings that bring about a feeling of sensitivity for preserving nature as a whole. This is a more integrated native view. This can be contrasted with the profit-oriented and exploitative views of the foreigners. There are several writings and sayings in Indian thought that support the concept of the oneness of all creation. The natives of India always project the ideas of respecting and valuing all the different components of nature. We do it with the feeling that our environmental values must translate to pro-conservation actions in all our day-to-day -day activities. Most of our actions have adverse environmental impacts 
unless we consciously avoid them. The sentiment that attempts to reverse these trends is enshrined in our environmental values. Such pro-environmental feelings for nature are a part of our constitution too. This strongly emphasizes environmental values. Indian culture is very rich and diverse and it teaches us to be tolerant to others and to nature. Now we will move on to the second paragraph question. Explain the changes in environmental values over the years with an example. Answer. Values are often invoked in discussions of how to develop a more sustainable relationship with the environment. People value the planet's air, water, creatures and natural wonders. Human values play an important role in shaping beliefs and a concern about climate change. Today, we know that the pro-environmental actions slowly begin to move from the domain of individuals to that of a community. A new educational process is created to provide a pro-environmental awareness at a school and college level. Every small child is taught the importance of environmental values so that they now begin to accept them as a norm. Concepts of what constitutes right and wrong behavior changes with the time. Values are not constant. It was once considered spot to shoot animals. It was considered a royal brave and a much desirable activity to kill a tiger. But today, wildlife reduced to a tiny fraction of what there was in the past. So, in a today's context, killing a tiger is now looked down upon as a crime against the biodiversity conservation. Thus the value system has been altered with the time. Similarly, with the large tracts of forest that existed in the past, cutting a few trees was not a significant criminal act. Today, this constitutes a major concern. We need a strong new environmental value system in which felling trees is considered unwise behavior. With really small human members in the past, throwing away a little household degradable garbage could not have been considered wrong. But with enormous numbers of people throwing away large quantities of non-degradable waste, it is indeed extremely damaging to the environment. Today, we know that the most fundamental environmental sentiment is to value nature herself. Appreciating nature's magnificence and treasuring life itself leads to positive feelings. There are man-modified landscapes like the colored patterns of farmland the greens of a tea, coffee plantation in the hill, etc. These spaces act as not only the lungs of a city, but also provide much needed psychological support. Now we will move on to the third paragraph question, that is, a right and not on human class relationship with nature. Answer. Human beings have been always completely depending on nature for all his needs. Humans have an inborn desire to explore nature. 
Wanting to unravel its mysteries is a part of human nature. However, modern society and educational processes have invariably suppressed these innate sentiments. Once exposed to the wonders of the wilderness, people tended to bond closely to nature. They begin to appreciate its complexity and fragility and this awakens a new desire to want to protect our natural heritage. The tiger's magnificence, the whale's and elephant's giant size, it's a part of nature that we cannot help but admire. The list of wonders, sorry, the list of wondrous aspects of nature's intricate connections is indeed awe-inspiring. This is also a part of our environment that we must value for its own sake. This is the oneness of nature. We must equally look at our environment beyond the wild sphere. There is incredible beauty in some man-modified landscapes too. Urban gardens and open spaces are also valuable and thus must be of prime concern to urban planners. These green spaces act as not only the lungs of the city but also provide much needed psychological support. The mental peace and a relaxation provided by such areas needs to be valued. Nature has been the source of psychological well-being and a physical health for human for the, from the beginning of its existence on the planet Earth. Hence, there has been a strong and a deep relationship between human and nature. But the industrialization and urbanization has gradually kept a human away from his main home and caused a big gap in a human's relationship with nature. But in recent years, as this alienation and a separation has been felt threatening both for human and nature, so a reconciliation effort has started between human beings and nature. This can bring a psychological well-being for human beings and a healthy life to our environment. Now we will move on to the fourth paragraph question. The fourth question is Comment on net, sorry, environmental values at the community level. Comment on the environmental values at the community level. Answer. Environmental values and uh, identities at the personal and group level motivates individuals' climate actions. Making people aware that they also strongly value the environment could be a critical strategy to motivate climate action. But at the community level, this occurs only when a critical number of people become environmentally conscious. These people will constitute a pro-environmental lobby force that makes governments and other people accept good environmental behavior. Environmental values have a linkages to varied environmental concerns. If people perceive that they care more about the environment than others, this may affect how much they support and take climate action. On one hand, this bias may promote climate action to enhancing individuals' environmental self-identity. Specifically, it may give people the impression that though caring for the environment differentiates them from others and characterizes them personally, making them likely to label themselves as the type of person 
who acts pro-environmentally. This strengthened environmental self-identity may in turn motivate climate action and thereby potentially further strengthen itself. Perceiving oneself as having stronger environmental values and identities than others might particularly have positive effects on a climate action when an individual's personal identity is activated. That is, when individuals define themselves by differentiating themselves from other persons. In order to better understand and promote climate action, it is important to consider motivational factors at both the individual level such as personal values and self-identity and a group level such as perceived group values and identities. Pro-environmental beliefs, attitudes, identities and behaviors such as energy saving behaviors, recycling and acceptability of environmental policies are important. Environmental values at the community level make individuals focus on the interest of others and the environment. These are typically positively related to pro-environmental beliefs and behaviors. Now we will move on to the fifth paragraph question, that is, write a note on the need for architectural heritage. Answer. Heritage preservation encompasses so much more than the conservation of her historic structures. There are many more things at stake. It is not simply about saving them for preservation's sake. In the cases where historic preservation has been ignored, a community's connection to the past is lost. The foundation is removed and with it goes pride and a sense of belonging. Environmental values must also stress on the importance of preserving ancient structures. The characteristic architecture, sculpture, artwork and crafts of ancient cultures is an invaluable environmental asset. It tells us where we have come from, where we are now and perhaps where we should go. Architectural heritage goes beyond preserving all the buildings to conserving whole traditional landscapes in rural areas and streetscapes in urban settings. Unless we learn to value these landscapes, they will disappear and our heritage will be lost. As environmentally conscious individuals, we need to develop a sense of values that are linked with a better and more sustainable way of life for all people. There are several positive as well as negative aspects of behaviors that are linked to our environment. The positive feelings that is of our environment include a value for nature, cultures, heritage and equity. We also need to become more sensitive to aspects that have negative impacts on the environment. To demolish a site and construct a new building is not as environmentally responsible as historic preservation. When a structure is removed, the old materials are discarded and new ones needed to be scoured and transported to the site, which is a huge waste of resources, energy and time. The obligation to conserve the architectural heritage of our local communities is as important as our, due, our duty to conserve the significant build heritage and its values or traditions of previous eras. More than ever, architectural heritage everywhere is at risk 
from a lack of appreciation, experience and a care. Some have altered, been lost and more are in danger. It is a living heritage and it is essential to understand, define, interpret and manage it well for future generations. Now we have uh, finished discussing the short answer questions and the paragraph questions from the chapter environmental values. In the next class we will meet again with the next chapter.